Why portable SSDs instead of portable HDD? Well, there are many reasons for that. For the first reason, it is extremely resilient against drops, much smaller in size and also multiple times faster and most importantly, it is now very cost effective as SSDs are very affordable nowadays. My intention in this video, as stated on the title, is to show you how you can create your own portable SSD that is perfect for your own use. For me, my intentions are clear. I edit videos off of a portable SSD, which is why I need one that has real good speeds and also reliable. So with that out of the way, we actually have even more reasons to get a portable SSD instead of, you know, getting a laptop, purposely getting a laptop that has more SSD slots because number one, most new laptops nowadays either have soldered SSDs or they do not have a secondary SSD slot so you have to swap out your existing one and for me, since I'm using the M1 MacBook Pro, yeah, there's just no SSD for me to swap. Everything is soldered onto the motherboard. Sure, I could have configured it to come with like one terabyte of SSD, but have you seen the price tag of that laptop with that capacity of SSD? And not to forget, the SSD eventually wears out, so I will have to change the SSD. But because the M1 Pro MacBook Pro has everything soldered onto the motherboard, I will have to get an entirely new motherboard. Then at that point in time, I might as well just get a new laptop, right? Because of the costs involved. And that is why I like portable SSDs so much. Particularly a DIY portable SSDs. I can choose whatever style of enclosure and whatever speed I want, and I can just pick and choose, slap it all together, and then it should work. Should, because we'll get into that later. What we have for you today here is the Orico NVMe USB 4.0 SSD enclosure. As the name suggests, this is a USB 4 enclosure, and the advertised speed, as you can see here, is 40 gigabits per second. But this 40 gigabits per second speed is only the USB 4.0 standards theoretical maximum and realistically speaking, you'll only be getting about 2700 megabytes per second read and 1400 megabytes per second write speed out of this enclosure. Since this is just an enclosure, I've also installed the PNY CS2140 1TB SSD which is a PCIe Gen 4 X4 NVMe SSD into this enclosure and ran the benchmarks. We tested this setup using the M1 Pro MacBook Pro and that laptop has a Thunderbolt 4 port so I am theoretically getting the best possible speed with no issues at all. Sure, this is not the fastest speed that we can achieve using this enclosure and since this SSD that we have installed does not have a DRAM, the speed is ultimately affected. However, for an external SSD, this kind of performance is actually quite mind-blowing. I've also tried putting the same PNY SSD into a USB 3 10 gigabits per second enclosure and the speed is less than half than what I would get compared to the Orico USB 4.0 enclosure. There is a sacrifice to double the performance which is price. The price gap to upgrade from USB 3 10 gigabits per second to USB 4 is just way too huge. But that is also mostly due to the Orico NVMe USB 4.0 SSD enclosure which is made out of a solid block of aluminum and it is shaped like this using CNC and as we can see here, there are some CNC cut marks around here. Not sure if you can see it on the top camera but I'll show you some pictures. And this very solid and rigid piece of portable SSD enclosure also becomes more or less like a heatsink for the SSD because they have also included a piece of thermal pad to sandwich between the SSD and this top piece here. We also did a thermal test and at idle, it can reach somewhere around 37 degrees Celsius, but it can reach above 40 degrees Celsius when we're doing stress tests on that SSD. And mind you, these are the temperatures taken on this surface of the portable SSD, which I will still have to say it's very well kept. So for my use case of video editing, when a video has a supremely high bitrate like a high quality 4K 60fps video, then sequential read speed is very important. I could have picked a higher end SSD that has a DRAM like PNY's own 3140 series if I'm not wrong. I'll show you some information on the screen here. That would literally increase my performance coming out of this portable SSD, the same enclosure. So with that out of the way, here are some tips that I can offer you on how you can create your own portable SSD. And if you want the highest possible speed, 
Then I think the one that we have here is actually quite good. The Oriko USB 4.0 NVMe SSD enclosure offers tremendous speed, but we can further improve the speed if we swap it out for the aforementioned PNY higher end SSD. I'm not sure what's the code name of it, but yeah, again, I'll show you some information on the screen here. The word high end SSD is another can of worm in itself, but in short, you have to find an SSD that has a DRAM cache higher performance NAND chips and also higher performance controller chip for that SSD. You can also get a higher capacity SSD that actually improves your performance compared to if you're getting the same SSD with a lower capacity within the same series and that is because of how the NAND chips work like a RAID array, something like that. Um, yeah, that is a topic on its own that we are not going to touch in this video. And not to forget, you also have to get a proper enclosure like this because you need to kick off a lot of the heat generated by the SSD or you will be thermally throttled and then you will be losing those performance. And that is why it is very important to get a proper SSD enclosure. Then you might wonder why I don't just get a pre-made portable SSD from other brands. That's also a very good point. There are a lot of brands that make their own plug and play portable SSDs like Samsung, Western Digital, SanDisk, Clev, and even ROG. You can buy one, plug it into your PC or Mac, and then you can start using immediately. Most of them even come with free companion apps to go alongside with the portable SSD to make file management easier. For example, scheduled backups or even data recovery services. I don't need those kind of apps because I prefer to handle it myself, so that is why I also just don't really care about those and just build my own portable SSD. But remember one thing, Mac versions of the same portable SSD is essentially a scam. Those SSD is just formatted to APFS or what's that again, Mac OS journal from the back old days. Yeah, those are a scam. What you should do is just buy the Windows version. It essentially is the same in terms of hardware. Plug it in, open your Mac disk utility, format it to EXFAT because if you format it to EXFAT, it is compatible with all operating systems, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and even Chromebooks. So compared to pre-built SSDs, the reason why I still prefer this kind of make your own portable SSD is because most brands will solder the SSD onto the PCB of the enclosure essentially means that you cannot change any part of the entire setup. With that said, we also have reviewed the Clef R1 portable SSD. That SSD is essentially 2-in-1, so it does have a swappable SSD inside the enclosure so you can swap it out to whatever you want. But that also brings us to one crucial point. A big advantage of why you should build your own enclosure, this kind of portable SSD is because you can take out the SSD, put it into another enclosure or just directly plug it into your desktop motherboard to transfer files. This is very important for number one, data recovery, and number two, for troubleshooting in case anything goes wrong with your setup here. So ultimately, if you wanna build your own SSD or buy a pre-made one, that is entirely up to you. You can essentially save some money if you wanna build your own SSD. And if you don't need the fastest SSD available in the market, then I'll just leave you a few information down in the description below because there are quite a lot of factors affecting what your choices should be depending on how you want to use your SSD. Just keep in mind about some compatibility issues when it comes to the enclosure and also the SSD that you are going to put inside the enclosure. For example, the ROG Arian that I have here does not support certain SSDs with a certain real tech controllers for their SSDs. So it's a bit difficult to explain but you will have to go through some hoops if you want to check for compatibility. Some manufacturers of that enclosure we just listed out on their website, like what ROG did, but some may not. So do your own research. So that's it. That's all we have to share with you about portable SSDs and why you should make them and how you can make them for yourself. I'm going to dismantle this and show you what's inside because I will need to take it out anyway. So it's a bit difficult to take out because this enclosure the cover is essentially adhered to the SSD so there's no clear way to pry it out oh I finally got it open okay 
So as you can see, this is what a good SSD enclosure should look like. You have a swappable SSD, standard 2280 form factor, thermal pad to conduct all of the heat from the SSD to some heatsink. This is just the enclosure itself being a heatsink. And yeah, essentially this is what uh, inside of a portable SSD look like.